question is about a withdrawer who I've worked with along with his wife for a year and a half. He's worked hard, he's made so much progress identifying his inner world and the ways in which he avoids feeling too much. Still, there's a feeling that he is working on behalf of his marriage and because his wife needs this from him. I'm having trouble getting to a level in which he feels there's really the same need in him, that he has something to gain from this. How do I get over this hump? That's a really good question and not an uncommon experience because of course the withdrawer's coping strategy is all about avoidance and staying distant from his own fear and vulnerability. So I would say that this person is distant from his own inner experience. That is not unusual at the start of EFT. I will let leverage that a withdrawer is more likely to extend themselves on behalf of their relationship than on their own behalf. Because remember, our view of self for withdrawer is positive. It's really like, I'm okay. Yeah. We don't want to confront what's true about this person. Their view of self is positive. But at the same time, we don't want to leave the partner feeling like it's all their problem and they're the broken one and they're the only one with emotional needs. Right. So I have to say, it's so important for me that you realize I'm working on your relationship's behalf relationship that got caught in a negative pattern based on both partners coping strategies the partner who copes by pursuing their needs are always more obvious their Mm -hmm. emotions are always more obvious that's not just this person Mm -hmm. the one who copes by avoiding their attachment needs fears and longings are always so subtle super not obvious that's not about this person That's just what the science tells us. That's human coping. That's human behavior. So it's not a personal thing. But if I don't work evenly and equally and balanced on behalf of your relationship, which means I have to work with each of your inner worlds, I'm not doing your relationship service. And I would actually be working against one of my primary goals, which is to have one partner not feel like they're the cause of the distress or they're just too needy or they're too emotional. That that I wouldn't, I couldn't live with myself with that. So I'm saying all of this to the client. Oh, wow. Okay. We have to get aligned and get on the same page. So then I might turn to this withdrawer and say, how will it be that I need data from your inner world? I need to come closer to your inner world, maybe closer than you've ever been to your own inner world for the benefit of your relationship. It's all about what your relationship needs, but that includes two of you, each of you. So I don't need to convince him he has fear he doesn't have. I need to help him get connected to his sensations and meet him where he is, which is he's really distant from his own sensation, understandably so. But in order for me to work on his relationship's behalf, I need this data from his inner world. One thing that I'm hearing is you make a process comment. Is that is that a fair A long-winded process comment even, yes. (laughs) Okay, a process comment. But your message to them is you're both coping in your individual way and you cope like a withdrawer, which is normal, and you're coping like a pursuer, which is normal. You're normalizing how they're both coping. The withdrawer will never become the pursuer and the pursuer will never become the withdrawer. And you're telling them, I need to be balanced with each of you, both of you. And withdrawer, I need to help you touch your fears and longings. The stuff that makes you human. The stuff that makes you human. We need to get into the room. We need to bring into the room. How will that be for you that I need to go closer to your inner world, the stuff that makes you human Mm -hmm. on my way to helping you two feel better connected? Mm -hmm. I don't have another way of working. Maybe that is just my limitation. No, no, no. I don't think it's your limitation. Well, I'm just thinking too about the beginning of this question, which is I've worked with them for a year and a half. This withdrawer loves his wife to have his inner world peered into and explored weekly, bi-weekly for a year and a half. Like there's a lot there inside of him to be compelled to to go to therapy for that long, trust that and help him to make contact with it. And maybe the middle ground here in terms of a potential outcome for this kind of withdrawal is to be able to state, I know I have humanness inside of me. I know I have those feelings because I'm human and I'm breathing. I also stay far from them, but I want you to know partner that I don't see our distress as your problem or you're the broken one. Mm. So maybe that's a start, a middle ground of I am where I am, which is fair. He deserves respect for where he is. And as we help him work towards the relational goals, I can't just begin to believe or work in a way that leaves him believing or his partner believing that it's their problem. Yeah, that's a lovely message from a withdrawer to a pursuer. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, great. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched.